want you to pay attention. It's called a whip scorpion. They are moving, and it's not recommended to swing. In this video, we take you on our trip to Costa Rica, a country with breathtaking places, wild rainforests, active volcanoes, dream beaches, and unique wildlife, where Pura Vida is not just a phrase, but a way of life. Hi, travel heads. We are currently on the plane from Amsterdam to San Jose, Costa Rica. A direct flight that took about 12 hours and costs $1,105 return. We are currently on the landing approach. It's 5.30 p.m. in San Jose, and the sun sets at 6 p.m. So we decided to go straight to the hotel after the long flight. The next morning, we went straight to the car rental office and picked up our booked rental car. For just $110, we were able to upgrade to a 4x4. That would have cost us $325 if we had booked it at home. Our drive from San Jose to La Fortuna took about three hours. Halfway there, we made a short stop at a pretty nice waterfall. The landscape became more and more overgrown and greener. And finally, we arrived in La Fortuna. The road leading into the city is easy recognizable by the view of the volcano called El Arenal. The Hotel Tangara Arenal, which was called Casona Rustica and Bungalow on our booking platform, feels like we are in the middle of the jungle. There is a nice breakfast room and there is also a very well-maintained garden. Come with me to the pool. I'll show you everything. The room looks very nice and is outside of the main part of the hotel. We are really satisfied, but we didn't know what to expect at night yet. After checking in, we headed straight to the Areno Volcano National Park. There are several hiking trails around the volcano. Our choice here is the Arenal 1968 trails. In that year, there was a major eruption, and here you can walk along the lava flow trail. You can choose between three hiking trails. The green one is the shortest, yellow is the middle one, and the red one is the hiking trail to see the entire park. We've only just set off, and I was still warning about snakes. Suddenly, I almost stepped on one myself. The Costa Rica coral snake has crawled past us. I was really scared, but still fast enough to film it. Her bites can be deadly, and emergency was around one kilometer to walk. But we also see more harmless animals like this cute squirrel. I feel much more comfortable with these. Slowly but surely, we reach the lava flow trails. Here, you can already see the eruption from 1968 from the color of the rocks. But be careful where you step. There are several ant trails of leafcutter ants in Costa Rica's national parks. Now, we are at the best volcano viewpoint in the area. Each of the hiking trails leads here. Take a look at this view. Incredible! By the way, here you see that quick help in an emergency can be quite far away. If you choose the red hiking trail at the beginning, you will also have the opportunity to see Lago Los Patos. Caution is advised here too, as caimans are swimming in the water.
Only 530 meters to go, and we have completed the hiking trail. Really wasn't easy with almost 35 degrees and 90% humidity. Let's speed up to the refreshment part. At the end of the hiking trail, there is a wonderful restaurant with a fantastic view of the volcano. We treat ourselves to a cold drink first. The sun is setting, and on the way out, we found this agouti. Our night was terrible. Our luggage was full of cockroaches, so we had to clean everything during the night. Therefore, my advice, close your bags at night. When you're in Costa Rica, you want one thing above everything else, to see sloths. Just five minutes from our hotel, there is the so-called sloth territory. Here you can observe two and three toed sloths in a protected habitat that is maintained by a traditional Costa Rican family. The rules for the territory are explained at the start of the tour. Stay in the trail, no whistling, no flashlight, don't apply spray inside, don't touch animals, and don't wear open toes shoes. You can take five, six, eight hours walking there by yourself, but here we have a little... We have a very good smart guide who drew our attention directly to something. I want you to pay attention. This is a little pond of water on the bank over there. We have a, a spectacle caiman. There is a caiman resting yeah. over there. We're gonna try to get closer. As long as we remain quiet, I think it's gonna stay there. And of course he was right. Wow, right at the start of the tour, we see this incredible caiman here. And now, listen closely. T-Rex. That's, uh, those are howler monkeys. Howler monkeys. The sound came from that direction. The red flags on the ground mean that a sloth was seen here. The guides marked the path to make it easier to find the animals. Check out how hard they are to spot with the naked eye. That is so cool! Our first sloth in Costa Rica! As I said before, the guides here are fantastic. They help you to see the animals even better with a tripod-mounted telescope and take much better photos. Before we went on the tour, we were completely unaware of many facts about sloths. Their teeth, for example, are particularly interesting. Our guide explained to us that a bite can be quite dangerous, and here you can see why. Listen to the sounds here. Isn't it amazing? Our guide found the next sloth directly behind the bridge. It was really hard to see with the naked eye, and we are even lucky enough to see the animal eating. Sloth can sleep 15 to 18 hours a day, so this is really lucky. And then it even started to move. So much easier. So grayish color of this one, besides the brown of the, the first one that we saw, that's one of the difference. And, it, and this one has more like a face mask, dark snout, and the big smile. And also another difference, easier to tell, is whenever you find a little tail on a slot, it has to be the three-toe slot, because the two-toe slot doesn't have a tail. So that one had a little tail Probably about this big. Why a little tail if it's not using to hold on to the tree, neither for balance. It's actually a miniature shovel. 
because the slots only come down once a week or once every two weeks to the bathrooms to the bathroom it's, it goes all the way down and the three-tone slot uses this miniature tail it's called the poopy dance so it reaches the ground the tail touches the ground and it kind of moves his butt to the side to create a little hole to poop in there so that's for the reason why they, they have a little tail so after they're going to the toilet you can tell because you, the tail is full of dirt and they bury their poop and then they go hot back up on the on, on the trees the reason the experts believe they do this this behavior is to hide their smell mm. from wild cats which are one of the main enemies 60 species for costa rica we have jaguar puma ocelot margay Osija, and jaguaroni and then the number one enemy of the slot is the reason why they hide so well and it's called the harpy eagle it's, it's the largest eagle in the world with a claw the size of a grizzly bear. So the, the, the best thing the slot can do is hide, to hide, not to be found. We continued our search and found a sloth with a baby. We are already on our way back to the station and have another stroke of luck. We don't even need binoculars to see this sloth. It really was a fantastic tour. Thanks again to the excellent guide. At the end of the tour, you get some fruits for refreshment. We highly recommend the sloth territory to everyone. Don't miss to buy a souvenir and drink an ice-frozen sloffy at the cafe next to the parking lot. After this great experience, we spontaneously decided to drive to Mystico Park and walk across Costa Rica's famous hanging bridges. At the start of the park, you walk through a beautiful green landscape, get some information about the nature, and you can hear animals everywhere. The nature here is really impressive. There is also a small botanical garden right at the start. And here you can see on the map how big the park actually is. If you have a lot of time, you should choose a guided tour. Otherwise, it's sometimes really difficult to see animals. Sometimes we just joined a group walking ahead or stopped when their guide suddenly pointed at things. Like, for example, this black frog or toad. Do you know this species? Please let us know in the comments. It doesn't take long to reach the first hanging bridge in Mystico Park. After admiring the trees, we reached the Arenal View Bridge. For people with a fear of heights, these bridges can be very scary. But I can tell you the view is worth it and amazing. Just look at this, incredible. You're right on top of the rainforest here. We are still trying to find animals in their small caves on our own. There are set to be lots of spiders, for example, but unfortunately, mainly at night. Each individual bridge is impressive. The view into the depth is crazy. As far as I know, the waterfall bridge is the highest bridge in this park. The view here is really dizzying, and you notice a lot more movement on this bridge. As you cross the bridge, you can hear the water below. It's a truly great experience. This spot is perfect for capturing stunning pictures and taking a moment to appreciate the natural beauty that surrounds you. And 
sometimes you can be lucky and spot a sleeping bat during the day. Now we are on the way to see the only waterfall in the park. It's surrounded by dense rainforest and cascades down a rocky cliff. This creates a picturesque scene. But to be honest, the hanging bridges are definitely the highlight. It's a must do when you visit Costa Rica. On the way back, the next snake came across. Thanks to barrier tape, a dangerous situation was prevented here. The hog-nosed pit viper lays comfortably by the side of the trail. The bites are rarely fatal if you seek medical treatment immediately. We are really surprised how inconspicuous the animals can be. The way out leads again over a hanging bridge. Pretty shaky here. The next animal surprise was already waiting for us. And that's exactly why we love Costa Rica. A coati is searching for food. Coatis are very curious and social animals that are related to raccoons. They are very playful. And this buddy is totally familiar with people. They are adaptable, intelligent animals that play a role in their ecosystems as predators and prey. What could be better than a coati with the El Arenal volcano in the background? It's not interested in the people at all. The focus is on eating. We enjoyed the fantastic view one more time and then left to see a bit of La Fortuna. La Fortuna is a popular town located in the Alajuela province of Costa Rica. There are many nice bars and eateries that fulfill absolutely every wish here. Whether you are vegetarian, want to eat pizza or meat, or just want to drink a few cocktails, in the city center of La Fortuna, there is a beautiful little park with a fountain and a church. There are also lots of green parrots in the trees. Travelheads, if you like this video, we would be happy if you leave us a like and a subscription so that you never miss a new video again. Thanks for your support and making these videos possible. For us, it's now time to leave La Fortuna and continue our journey. See you on the Pacific Coast. Good morning, travel heads, and welcome to Tamarindo. The third day of our Costa Rica trip began in La Fortuna. A four hours drive through the country's varied landscapes took us to a surfer's paradise. We checked in at the cozy Hotel Elixir, right in the center of the city. We had no time to lose and made our way to the famous food truck garden. The selection of good food here is gigantic. From Polish pierogi, Caribbean food, tacos and patacones, churros, ice cream, pizza, and burgers with fries. You can get it all here. We opted for a huge burger with fries and a chilled imperial to go with it. The midday sun at almost 35 degrees definitely ensures that it's not overcrowded here. Now it was time to go to the beach and see why it is so popular with tourists. 
Tamarindo is located on the Pacific coast in Costa Rica, known for its laid-back atmosphere, stunning beaches, and incredible sunsets. It is a relatively small town with a population of just over 6,000 people. The town stretches along the coast, and from the center of Tamarindo, you can walk to the beach in just a few minutes. Tamarindo Beach is also a surf spot, attracting surfers of all levels with its consistent waves and warm waters. If you're new to surfing, there are plenty of schools and instructors to get you started. But there is more than just sun and surf. Just a short distance from the beach, you can explore the estuary of the Tamarindo River. We are currently walking the way to the part of the beach where it's not recommended to swim. Taking a boat tour through the estuary is a great way to see crocodiles up close. Here we see one of the boats coming back from a tour. For me, it's unbelievable that people just don't care about the danger of crocodiles and still go for a swim here. A man who offers boat tours told us the following about the crocodiles. They come from the sea, uh, from the river, they cross to the, to the ocean, then they return to the sea. They are moving, and it's not recommended to swim. Unfortunately, we don't have time for a boat tour, because we want to go on a turtle nesting tour in the evening. But first, we want to have a small cocktail made from a coconut. The coconut cocktail was great, but now it's time for our turtle nesting tour. We booked it with Native's Way for $55 per person. I will put the links to the providers in the description. Do you remember the end of the beach walk? There we see Playa Grande from a distance. Normally you would watch the turtles there, but as it was already the end of the nesting season, we go to Playa Honda. It's around 35 minutes away from Tamarindo by car. It is already pitch black outside, and we are allowed to use our smartphone flashlight on the way to the beach. But at the beach, we have to wait in complete darkness while our guide is searching with a red light. It took almost an hour, but it was worth the wait. We had almost given up hope, but now we see all these baby turtles running towards us. It's their first day on Earth, but unfortunately for most of them, it's also their last. Only a few actually survive, sadly. The others are quickly getting eaten by other sea creatures. Sure about not to step in them. Only a short time later, we see this. What looks like tire tracks from a tractor are actually the tracks of an adult turtle. She is preparing a nest in the sand to lay her eggs. Towards the end of the nesting season, it becomes increasingly difficult to find a good place. The sand is very dry, so she struggles a lot with the condition. A stone in her nest is causing a lot of problems, so a few people help to remove it. Now we leave her alone and spend the rest of the evening enjoying live music in Tamarindo. It's the next morning and we are on the way to Playa Langosta, which is part of the Marino Las Baulas National Park. Yeah. You can't do that. Is it going on?
After the walk, we sat down for a coffee to enjoy the view. Playa Langosta is really great if you don't fancy the crowds. But before we set off for the next town, we want to try a few tacos at Little Lucha. It has gained popularity for its authentic Mexican street-style tacos and lively atmosphere. We can definitely confirm this and recommend this restaurant. The food is delicious. Tamarindo was great, but now we have to move on. We drove from Tamarindo to Liberia in about two hours for one night. We had an inexpensive small hotel with a well-guarded parking lot, breakfast, and many guests who were just passing through. I'll give you the details in the video description. In the evening, we went into town to watch a soccer match. The local heroes from Municipal Liberia were playing against LD Alajuelense in the Estadio Edgardo Baltodano Briceño. It was well attended, and the mascot got the atmosphere going. There was even a small section of active fans. Liberia had no chance in the game and went down 4-0, to zero, but the highlight was the halftime show. But watch for yourself. Unbelievable that this guy scored a goal. Too funny. Haha. <laughs> the next day, we had a longer road trip ahead of us. It would take a whole four hours and five minutes to get from Liberia to our hotel at the National Park. But of course, we had to stop at what is probably the most famous bridge in Costa Rica, the Crocodile Bridge. When we arrived there, People who took money to look after our car were waiting for us. There is a lot of theft here, so don't leave any obvious valuables in the car. There are plenty of crocodile souvenirs to buy and a lot of traffic. I didn't expect it to be that busy at the bridge. I have to say that the sight of all these crocodiles really blew me away. Supposedly, there are so many of them here because they were often fed. This is illegal and should be avoided. They might associate humans with food, and this could interfere with their natural hunting instinct. But it's still totally impressive to watch them. We then continued on our way, but stopped again briefly at the large crocodile statue in Tarcoles. This is worth a picture, don't you think? The road trip could hardly have been more exciting. There were green landscapes, beautiful views, fun places, and interesting restaurants along the way. After a good five hours, we finally arrived. Manuel Antonio National Park. Our hotel had a really perfect location right next to the National Park. From here, it was just a 10 minutes walk to the entrance. We had booked our tour for the next day at 7 a.m., directly when the park opens. So we decided to explore the surrounding area. At first we thought, let's go to the beach. But then we saw monkeys in the distance near the bus stop. A cute little capuchin monkey was hanging relaxed in the tree. And as it is usually the case with these animals, if one of them is there, there are usually more to be found. Two more capuchin monkeys were looking for something edible in the area. I personally think it's a shame that people leave their garbage here, even if it's nice to watch these animals so close. Capuchin monkeys are known for their intelligence and problem-solving abilities. They're often using tools like sticks or rocks to access food. These monkeys live in large social groups led by a dominant male. They are highly communicative, using vocalizations and facial expressions to interact. 
Our buddy we saw first has woken up and we're looking for something to eat. I could watch them all day, but we also wanted to see the town. There was a lagoon a few meters away. People are warned not to go to swim here as there are probably some crocodiles there. To be honest, absolutely nothing would get me into this water. Just the thought that there could be crocodiles here scares me. But if we simply turn our gaze to the right, we can see the wonderful beach. The beach is truly breathtakingly beautiful. White sand, clear blue water, lush rainforest in the background, wildlife encounters, perfect for swimming, snorkeling, and other water activities. I think this could be the most beautiful beach in Costa Rica. People are even going for paragliding here. Would you do that? Write it in the comments. It does look a bit scary, doesn't it? The streets of the city are full of stores, souvenir shops, and restaurants. Of course, there is also a supermarket. We wandered around a bit and found this cool old school bus with the inscription, Pura Vida a popular phrase in Costa Rica that translates to pure life, but it holds much deeper meaning. It reflects the Costa Rican lifestyle and attitude. It's often used as a greeting, farewell, or to express that everything is going well. Pura Vida embodies the laid-back positive spirit of the country and is a reminder to enjoy life's simple pleasure. At the end of the evening, we enjoyed the beautiful sunset and then went to bed. We were really looking forward to the National Park. The next morning, we set off on the 10-minute walk to the park. The entrance is still locked because it's a little before 7 in the morning. The bags quickly need to be checked because you're not allowed to bring plastic bottles, for example. We are the first in the park and need to have a quick look at the map. We want to see absolutely everything. The park is really huge. If you want to walk at a leisurely pace, you should allow 6 to 7 hours to see the whole park and possibly go swimming. We want to see everything in about five hours without swimming, as we can only check out the hotel by 12 noon. It took us a while to not only hear, but also see the first animals. Our first animal is the Halloween crab. These land crabs are easily recognizable by their colors, usually with a black body bright orange legs and purple claws resembling a Halloween theme. They are often seen scurrying through the forest, especially near the park's beaches and mangroves. Just a short walk further and we almost overlooked the next resident. It's incredible how well the black spiny-tailed iguana adapt to their environment. This specimen was sitting calmly on this tree stump. They are incredibly fast, capable of sprinting up to 20 miles per hour to escape predators. We really enjoy being almost alone here and looking out for animals. Here we see an agouti having a leisurely breakfast. Agoutis play a crucial role in the ecosystem by burying seeds, which helps with forest regeneration. Now we are at Jamelis Beach, and because it's still early morning, we are completely alone here. 
a fantastic atmosphere that is difficult to capture. Peace, quiet, untouched nature, as well as no garbage. It's simply a pleasure. Oh, look, another iguana. Isn't it just impressive how well these animals adapt to their environment? They are really hard to see. This one has a little morning snack. I've never seen them eating before. Now we are on the way to the highest viewpoint in Manuel Antonio National Park. We want to climb this as early as possible as the temperature is still relatively okay at this time of day. It's just before 10 o'clock in the morning and we have quite a few steps to climb. The effort is definitely worth it for this view. I can recommend to take binoculars with you because on a good day, you can also spot whales and dolphins from here. If we turn around once, we then have a fantastic view of Playa Ray. We are practically at the furthest point in the park from the entrance. On the way to the center, we realize how crowded it is now. Our route seems to be very well chosen so far. As we had booked a non-guided tour, it is difficult for us to spot sloths. But now that the park is so busy, we are able to spot them thanks to a few guides. Look how hard to spot they can be. It's crazy. And right behind us, there is a howler monkey. We have heard their howling in La Fortuna before, but we didn't see one until now. Our route now takes us to the famous Manuel Antonio Beach. Here you have to be careful from time to time that raccoons don't steal your bag when you go swimming. Funny, isn't it? The beach is really gorgeous with its white sand. Sometimes you can even see turtles here, but unfortunately, we aren't that lucky. The next trails lead us along the beach. Right up in this tree, there is a sleeping anteater. Now the fun part begins. We encountered a whole bunch of capuchin monkeys on the beach trail. We had already seen some yesterday, but these are so playful and funny to look at. A really funny gang of monkeys. We are as good as through with our tour, but we want to go one more trail where there is supposed to be a waterfall. This trail is called the Catarata Waterfall Trail. We are totally disappointed because the waterfall is completely dry. It feels like we made the journey for nothing, but on the way back, this happened. At first we thought it's just a part of the tree, but then we saw the claws. We are so incredibly lucky. Sloths are sleeping 18 hours a day, and this one wakes up exactly when we are there. Everyone told us it's virtually impossible to spot a sloth without a guide, and then we see an active sloth just like that. And it even poses for the perfect photo. Simply fantastic. An incredible end of our tour in the National Park. In about four hours, we were able to see every trail of the park. One trail was under construction, but that wasn't too bad for us. So let me show you which routes we had chosen for ourselves. We started on the El Perezoso Trail and went via Playa Gemelas to the Puerto Escondido Trail, via Congo's Trail, 
we made the hardest Miradores trail. You remember? The one with the many steps. From here, we went the whole trail back and took the Playa Manuel Antonio Trail. Punta Catedral was under construction, so we walked along the beach where we met the Capuchin monkeys. Via El Manglar Trail, we visited the Catarata Estacional Trail and saw the sloth in action. We managed this in four hours, but recommend six. After this very strenuous tour, we wanted to have a hearty lunch and visited the bar El Avion. The bar is built into a real Fairchild C-123 cargo plane, which was part of the Iran-Contra affair in the 1980s. The plane was purchased and brought to Manuel Antonio after being abandoned at the San Jose airport. You can even go into the cockpit. What a cool bar, isn't it? And do you know what's even better? You don't only have a cool old airplane to look at and a cockpit to sit in, the bar is located on a hill. So this combines tasty food and an awesome and stunning view. This really is a restaurant that you should visit. By the way, if you're lucky like us, you might spot a sloth here too. We are on the way to Drake Bay, a remote paradise on Costa Rica's Osa Peninsula. This is the best starting point for a tour to Corcovado. The drive from Manuel Antonio to Drake Bay takes nearly four hours, but you should allow more time. A question we often asked ourselves was, do we really need a four by four rental car? In the rainy season, I can well imagine that it is necessary, but I wouldn't agree in dry season. On our route, all the more critical rivers were equipped with a bridge. But what I would really recommend is not to arrive in the dark. This significantly extended our travel time. The roads were pretty bumpy and there were a few herds of cows blocking the way. The Costa Rican cows are quite a sight, by the way. Look at these huge animals. One of them simply ignored our car completely. After nearly five hours, we finally arrived in Drake Bay. Our next morning started with this fantastic view of the Pacific Ocean. You can find information about our hotel in the description. Our meeting point for the Corcovado tour was on the beach. It was only a three minute walk from our hotel. We booked our tour with La Picolina Tours for around $79 per person. I will provide you with more information in the description. The boat trip was rough, and probably not for people with sensitive stomachs. After around 60 minutes, we arrived at our destination, Serena Station, Corcovado. Look at this beautiful scenery. By the way, you shouldn't forget to bring water shoes, because you will have to go into the water to get on your boat. At the entrance, all bags are carefully checked to ensure that no one brings food into the park. Tours without a guide are not allowed due to the park's remote and potentially dangerous conditions. The dense vegetation, presence of wild animals like jaguars and venomous snakes, and unpredictable weather make it risky for inexperienced visitors. You see a lot of people at the beginning, but the longer you're in the jungle, the more beautiful and lonely it becomes. Our guide was very experienced. So it was only a few minutes before we saw the park's first inhabitant. A spider monkey was swinging through the trees. Spider monkeys are true climbing experts. 
using their strong, flexible tail as a fifth limb to hold on to branches. They are primarily frugivores, with up to 90% of their diet consisting of fruits. That makes them important seed dispersers in their ecosystem. A few meters further on, we came across the great Carasso. Those animals make a low booming sound, often described as a deep, resonant boom, or humming noise. The colony, and they can be five meters deep. Then imagine how big is this underground city with tunnels, with chambers, with mushrooms for food. Yeah. Everywhere, look at that, how big is it? This is a colony of some papas, hormigas cortadoras de hojas, all their colonies from all their Very impressive what kind of cities these ants build here. This one are hunters, the other one... Are... Like snakes, they change the skin. Mm -hmm. It's called a whip a scorpion. Mm -hmm. And they are nocturnal. When you do night tours, you can see them. They are ugly, but they are harmless. Yeah. And they are... Yeah. <laughs> whip a scorpion. Okay, we can hear the howler monkeys, monkey number two. It can be three kilometers away and we can still hear them. This plane was coming here when there was no forest here. That is why you see it's almost complete. Uh, normally they come here to buy the gold from the people living here extracting gold. Because Corcovado have a lot of gold. But when it becomes a national park, everybody has to live. In the ranger station, there is a little museum with pictures where you can see how this place looked like before it was a national park. This is a secondary forest. It's a forest around 45, 50 years old. And when this plane crashed, it was no forest. And when it fell, there was no forest. The first part of the tour was already very impressive. It was around 35 degrees here, and we made our way to the beach. Tapirs are often said to live there, as they go to the water to drink in these temperatures. There is always the possibility of encountering crocodiles, or even seeing whales from here. Unfortunately, we didn't have that luck. Another group told us that a tapir had actually just been here, but at the waterhole, we only met a coati who helped us look for the top here. Our guide had a very good feel for the animals and knew exactly what was important. So we found the top here. In the meantime, it had found a shady spot to sleep. Tapirs are great swimmers that use water to escape predators and cool off in the wild. They are mostly active at night and tend to avoid human contact. That makes them elusive and hard to spot in the wild. And up the guy thought he was going to the little river because sometimes they go to the water to poop. The tapir, they like to poop in the water before they go sleeping. And sometimes they do that. But no, this one was coming this way because I saw they've been using it a lot. I was expecting it was coming this way. Let's give it a little room for the other group. It was time for a lunch break and we made our way to the Serena Ranger Station. Shortly before that, our guide found a few red macaw parrots. Difficult to see with the camera zoom, but very good with our guide's telescope. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now we went to Serena Station. The following rule applies to all visitors here. Take off your shoes. I didn't understand exactly why, but you don't walk around in shoes at home either, do you? Lunch was urgently needed. Tasty. You can also stay overnight here if you book Corcovado tours lasting several days. These are the beds. The jungle at night must be overwhelming. Well fortified, we continued our tour and probably found the best spot ever for monkey watching that day. We had all four monkey species in one spot. Look at how relaxed those howler monkeys are laying in the trees up there. <laughs> you see the branches moving? Very good breeze on top of the trees. And they are in the air conditioned area. We also saw a squirrel monkey for the first time in Costa Rica. The little one was really playful. All Costa Rican monkeys in less than 100 meters. And you see they are not coming for food. They are not afraid to people. Squirrel monkeys live in large groups sometimes up to 300 individuals. That makes them highly social and active throughout the day. Right next door, we found a capuchin monkey, which we had already seen in Manuel Antonio. <laughs> capuchin monkeys are incredibly social, living in groups of up to 30 individuals. They often communicate through vocalizations and facial expressions. The spider monkeys on this spot had a little lunch break. Seems like they were very tired. By the way, always stay alert when you walk around Corcovado. A golden silk orb weaver appeared right in front of us. But to reassure you, they are generally not aggressive towards humans, and their bite is not dangerous. The silk of the golden silk orb weaver's web has a distinct golden hue, especially in sunlight, and is exceptionally strong. Snake? Uh, snakes, best time to see a snake are at night. Mm -hmm. Snake. Spiders, frogs, and most insects is better at night. We then asked our guide for pumas and tapir sightings in Serena Station. In natural condition, even in Costa Rica, they are kind of hard to see. For every 10 times I see tapir in Serena, in San Pedrillo, the other ranger station, I see it one time. But for every 10 times we see pumas in San Pedrillo, in Sirena, we see them only one time. And it's one it's or the other one. Mm -hmm. So this means, if you want to have a better chance for pumas in Corcovado, you should book a San Pedrillo tour. If you want tapirs, book Sirena. Time flew by and it was getting late, and so we made our way to the exit. But look at this. We had another chance to see tapirs. Do you see them? They can hide pretty well, don't you think? If our guide hadn't said anything, we would have easily missed them. Both tapirs lay relaxed in the shade and slept. Right next to them, we even found a sleeping bat. Then we went back on the boat and had an extremely uncomfortable experience later. The walk to the water was much further than this morning, and it was very, very hot in the blazing sun.
The waves were strong and the boat rocked back and forth. It was quite a wild ride. But then we found ourselves in a very uncomfortable situation. All of a sudden, the boat stopped, and we were suddenly out on the ocean without fuel. The captain explained to us that someone had apparently pumped out the fuel in the morning and stolen it. So now we had to wait and see if other tourist boats happened to have fuel for us. The first two boats that came by couldn't help us. It was a very strange situation. But after about 25 minutes, a boat finally came along that was able to help. We were very relieved when we were finally able to continue. A good feeling to see the beach at Drake Bay again. From here, I would swim if we ran out of fuel again. On the way back, we saw more macaw parrots in a tree right in front of our hotel. Isn't that amazing? It feels like we are back in Corcovado again. We used the rest of the day to try out a hiking trail in Drake Bay. There are several trails you can walk here. We chose one that led over hanging bridges. The trail led us along the beach and very nice restaurants. The nature in Drake Bay is absolutely stunning. You can walk along the trail to the San Pedrillo entrance to Corcovado in six hours. There are several nice places to take a break and enjoy the nature. And as always, there are also some leaf cutter ants here. Have you ever seen such a long ant trail? The absolute madness. Stunning, isn't it? This was the craziest hanging bridge. You have to imagine that there could be crocodiles in the water, and this bridge really didn't look trustworthy at all. But we just had to go over it. After the bridge, we reached our destination, a small, quiet beach where we simply relaxed again and reflected on the day. You can hardly describe the feeling here. It's just so relaxing and secluded. Dreamland. On the way back, we stopped at Claudio's Grill and enjoyed the evening and an excellent meal. Really delicious and highly recommended. Waking up in the morning at Cabinas Murillo, and seeing this incredible view and macaws flying by was just incredible. Unfortunately, we had to leave Drake Bay now. This time we had much better weather conditions, but you still have to drive carefully on the bumpy roads. We also had to stop at a viewpoint 
that we couldn't see on the way to Drake Bay because it was too dark. We just parked our car in Uvita and are on the way to what is probably the most unusual beach formation in the world. For just $7, you can enter the beach, which is part of the Marino Balina National Park. Uvita is located on Costa Rica's southern Pacific coast and only a three and a half hours drive away from the capital city, San Jose. One of the most famous and unique features of the beach is the whale's tail-shaped sandbar which is only visible during low tide. So let's see if we are lucky today. On the way to the Whale Tail Beach, you can walk the Waves of Climate Change Trail. It's an easy 35 minutes walk and only 590 meters long. All around, you can see palm trees that have fallen or have exposed roots. This is a result of coastal erosion. Throughout the trail, you will encounter informative signs that detail the impacts of climate change, and each stop is designed to raise awareness and encourage eco-friendly practices. And as always in Costa Rica, you can also meet many different animals here. Do you know which species of spider this is? Let us know and write a comment. At the end of the trail, you come out directly at the Whale Tail Beach. The beach is really huge and incredibly wide. And do you know what the craziest thing is? Not only does the beach look like a whale's tail, it's even possible to see whales here. It is one of the best places in the world for whale watching. Both northern and southern hemisphere humpback whales migrate through the waters. So it's possible to spot these majestic creatures almost year round. The town even hosts an annual whale and dolphin festival. We have now made it to the end of the whale's tail. Unfortunately, we couldn't spot any whales today, but the view here was still fantastic. After visiting the beach, we decided to visit a rather unknown viewpoint. I'll give you the coordinates in the description. For the first time on our Costa Rica trip, we had to be prepared for a steep climb, and we're very glad that we had booked 4x4. way up was an adventure in itself, whether by car or the incredibly steep rest of the way on foot. From our point of view, the climb was definitely worth it, because the view we had was amazing. Our next stop was the Catarata Waterfall, just a short hike from the main road in Uvita. For only about $4, you can refresh yourself in the water and also have the opportunity to visit the butterfly garden. The hike itself is very easy and should be doable for anyone who is reasonably good on foot. It's the perfect place to refresh yourself. It was around 35 degrees and the cool dip in the water gave us a lot of energy back. People really had a lot of fun. By the way, it is important that you always stay on the trail. Both frogs, which can be poisonous, and snakes live here. 
Now we wanted to see Costa Rica's diversity of butterflies. You get to learn about their life cycle and importance to the local ecosystem. A beautiful and educational stop during your visit to the waterfall. At the end of this strenuous day, we looked for a restaurant with a beautiful view of the whale tail beach to enjoy the sunset with a hearty meal. We really had the best weather for the sunset. See for yourself how beautiful it was. We also found a new furry friend here. The next morning we set off for the last destination of the trip, the capital city, San Jose. Before our departure, we want to watch another soccer match. The famous club of Deportivo Saprissa takes on CS Herediano. The atmosphere is fantastic. The fans are singing, having fun, and the stadium is sold out. Unbelievable! What a volume! Saprissa won the match with a score of 2 0. These guys know how to party. We ended the evening in the restaurant of our hotel. It was time to leave this beautiful country. We used the free time at the airport to buy a few souvenirs. It's very, very expensive here, so you should consider to buy them somewhere else. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. Goodbye. Costa Rica.